What's up, everybody? I think we should just get right into it. This is episode four of Best Shape of My Life with Will Smith. Today's episode titled, I Quit. Uh, uh, I don't want to do an, a preview because I'm not sure what this is going to be like. This is going to be pretty crazy and pretty interesting. We've got a lot of really cool content that came before this, a lot of stuff that was really red flaggy, a lot of stuff that really helped open our eyes as to what the fitness journey can really be about, even for somebody as famous, driven, ambitious uh, as Will Smith. So I say we just get right into it, shall we? Chapter 20, Surrender. I began to refer to my nice guy persona as Uncle Fluffy. He was the pleaser in me, the part of me that had to smile no matter how I was feeling. He wasn't allowed to be in a bad mood or have a bad day. He signed every autograph, shook every hand, kissed every baby. But Fluffy was further complicated by his shadow counterpart, the general. When I didn't get the approval I sought, my anguish would express itself as the general. The general's job was to get the flag to the top of the hill by any means necessary and to punish those who dared to dissent. Even myself. I'm supposed to be 205 when I step on this scale for a pound a week. I don't know how many weeks it's going to take before old boy get his shit together. That's good. Let's see what I'm going to be, though. I figured it was an up week. God damn it. It's terrible. Will Smith being up in weight, again, it's really not that surprising to me. As a trainer, it's something I see all the time. The weight loss journey is not a straight line. I say it over and over and over again, and it's the kind of thing that I feel like I'm just going to keep saying until I damn well retire. I'm probably going to be saying it just for the rest of my life because I feel like it's the kind of thing that even though it, you know it's common knowledge amongst trainers, not common knowledge amongst most people, and even though you say it because it's not common knowledge amongst people, no matter who you say it to, you're going to end up saying it again, sometimes to the same people you've already said it to once before because it's such an easy concept for people to forget. Uh, but yeah... Um, it really looks like psychologically Will's in a tough spot here. So I don't know how much of that is playing into this at all. Uh, but uh, I mean, it's not a simple calculation. Like weight is just, a, it's one metric amongst many. So when you look at Will in this particular case, like he's looking much better off than when he started. He's looking a lot better, looking really good. I mean, he's really lost a lot of weight. He's looking like there's a lot more definition there. And, and you know, he's got more muscle there, the muscle mass that's, you know, come on the sort of chest, on the, on the arms, the shoulders. Uh, he's got a lot to be proud of, but I think because it's not where he wants to be, He's going to spend a lot of time punishing himself. And we've seen what happens in previous episodes, like episode two, what kind of things happens when he punishes himself. So going to be interesting to see what the result is this time. And now we have a name to put to it. We know that the general is going to be taking some action likely. Let's see what the general does. I really hope the psychologist weighs in on this because there's so much to unpack there. I'll wait till the, to the very end before we, we do that. But well, we'll talk about that for sure. I've been doing this stupid crap and I don't care what I weigh today. All right, so that was the first horrendous week, Jazz. So what are the numbers that he was up by? Uh, the weight was up 0.8 of a pound, so it's almost a pound. Um, he had a lot that he was sort of working with this week. Oh, Will, can you stand over here? Can you do this? You can speed up a little, Will? There were sporadic workouts. We didn't do them every day. You know, we can't afford to do that with the time frame we're on either. That was a bad week. Yeah. So this week is going to be ridiculous. 5.15, wake up, weigh in, run, then come back, right down. Then I'm into the bag. <laughs> the first workout. 
and a second workout. Nope, nope, nope. Do a finisher just to blow it out. Then I've been doing the writing session. I get it. Luke's done. It's 4.27 a.m. <laughs> now we're going running. This pacing for tonight. Come back. <sighs> and then going to shoot things to make a show. Training. <sighs> Ouch. I only got four hours and 28 minutes of sleep. <laughs> we're good to go? Ready? Get a call, flying jack. I don't know where I'm going with this. This whole shit is stupid. Will is somebody who has been so rewarded by the world for putting his head down and grinding and getting the win. The first thing I think as a psychologist in his presence is, how the heck does this guy cope when he's not winning? Somebody like Will is so relentlessly focused on achieving all of his goals, and so he doesn't consider his limits, whether it's fitness or his book or even filming this show. But the more a person is stretched, sooner or later, they snap. Uncle Fluffy was born as my strategic childhood persona. If I was funny enough, sweet enough, harmless enough, entertaining enough, then I wouldn't be hurt. How are you, sir? How are you? Pleasure. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm ready. All right. Fluffy wants to be approved of. It's the only safety he can conceive. I think I'm going to work in hospital. I think it might be time to at least do a small dig on Uncle Fluffy, the opposing character to the general. Uncle Fluffy sounds like basically the ultimate code switch. If you don't know what code switching is, Editor Keegan, if you want to throw something up, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. That's what Uncle Fluffy seems like. It seems like the black man in a white man's world pushed to an extreme, like just the code switch allowing you to blend in with the world around you and feel safe and feel secure and feel like nothing's going to happen to me. Um, but on a level just so much more advanced than just about any code switch I've ever seen personally. This is only getting more interesting to me. Um, because a part of me is wondering, it almost feels like that code switch exists to please his father. But I'm not a psychologist. It just It's just what uh, an energy I feel, uh, something, a suspicion I have based on what we've seen thus far and how these two characters seem to interact with himself, with the world around him, and what they were developed in order to accomplish. Anyhow, let's keep going. Fatality in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not going to be a cop. I can tell from the first option. <laughs> But Uncle Fluffy is masking my true feelings. So the plan is to do a practice run, let Will get comfortable with all this, and then do one more that's official and timed. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. shit. OK, good job. There's no version I that we're doing this again. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. It's fine. What's going on? Oh, man, he's looking pretty tired. All right, we're good. No, but if you're Yeah, I think we're I think we're good. Will didn't show up this morning. Um, you know, we're here making the best of it, shooting some B-roll stuff. Obviously, the idea was to shoot him, but uh, we roll with the punches out here, um, especially on this journey. What did you just say? No gym today. Wait, is that what he just said? Yeah, they just sent for a. Uh... How many times has he canceled now? Uh... Like, how many times has he canceled workouts for the show? Uh, I think he 
th this week's different. I think a lot of the times, like he's been monitoring, you know, his fatigue. Right. And and so like there's a bit of wisdom in you know taking rest days here and there, because mm -hmm. um, we can you know flip the schedule in terms of the days off. But this week it's not not about that. His trainer looks worried. And like I've said in previous videos, his trainer seems to be pretty in tune with Will. Like he, the two of them seem to have known each other long enough that his trainer seems to really have a good idea as to like what Will's thinking, how Will's feeling, how Will receives certain things, and how he interpret certain certain things and act on certain things. And I, I'm, I know that I'm pretty sure that since again they've been working together so long, I know his trainer probably has some ideas to how to handle questions about Will in terms of managing the public persona and making sure that the image is overall, you know, handled some sort of like essentially a, like a PR type training, or at least some idea as to how the PR concept on his end should function and how, you know, in, as far as Will is concerned, it should be managed. That answer sounds a little PR-y, but as a trainer looking at another trainer, I can see worry in his face. I can see concern. His His expression betrays a certain amount of fuck, this is not good. This is really not good. He's not in a good place. I'm really interested to see where this goes. <laughs> Man, this might be a really long one. I don't know how much I'm actually going to be able to cut out of this because so much of this is so relevant. We'll deal with that when we get there. Editor Keegan, you have a hard job this week. I do not envy you. Ready? I uh, stay ready, so I don't have to get ready, Dex. You got it? Got it. Okay. The lead tension for me is the the book. Um, I'm writing my book, I'm writing my memoir. You know, there's a deadline and it's like exposing my life and um, so many things that people don't know about me. So I think on a daily, um, the emotional exhaustion of mining those, uh, you know, sometimes traumatic experiences from my childhood and from my life in general, um, emoting in that way really saps my energy. What's coming up for you that's not physical? Um... I don't want to do any of this. I'm finished with uh, this project in my mind. The use of this time right here is not valuable to me. It goes against what I want to be doing. It goes against coming in at the weight, and it goes against the, what the whole point is. And I'm really done with all of this and I don't want shooting it to get in the way. And we blew it. We missed it. It's over, and we got to stop, and I'm ready to stop. I'm finished with the best shape of my life. I want to get in the best shape of my life, and I don't want shooting the best shape of my life to get in the way of me getting in the best shape of my life. Okay, we're done. Let's pack it up. Where, where do we go from here? I don't know. All right, let's cut to the chase and get to some of the dissections. So uh, first and foremost, um, the general and what was it Mr. Fluffy, I think, 
yeah, it's it explains a lot all about why he acted the way he did when he didn't make weight that first week. Uh, some of the really negative eating patterns that he adopted and uh, actions that he took that were just like red flags abound. This week, I don't even know if it's necessarily about red flags uh, adding to the list or if it's just about saying this is what happens when you have this many red flags on the field. Like, there's no way we're gonna we're gonna make it through that you can't proceed when you have this much to tackle i mean i called most of this right from the jump there's too much on his plate it's just going to be too much writing a memoir tackling a lot of these emotional issues is going to be a very taxing thing and this process of body transformation is both you know physical mental and emotional and or actually all three physical mental and emotional and if you don't have you know the capacity to handle you know all of it while you're going through it because you're taxing yourself on one of those levels somewhere else it's just going to mess with your ability to to make progress through your journey um yeah, this is nuts. This is crazy. Um, the fact that he quit here, I mean, I, it makes sense. You can't maintain the pace he's created with all the stuff he's got going on for any length of time. You will burn yourself out. Burnout is real. Right. People, it goes by many names. There's a lot of different ways to look at it. You could look at it as like uh, overtraining, um, uh, or you could look at it as a burnout. Uh, but the ideology is pretty similar. And honestly, one kind of goes with the other, especially in situations like this, where you've put too much in front of you, too many things that you have to tackle, and you just can't tackle all of them. Uh, and in his reckless and over enthusiastic approach to trying to tackle some if not all of them he has burnt himself out and made it difficult if not impossible to pursue any of them uh, uh properly so yeah this is wow it's shocking and honestly i mean not gonna lie i feel like some of you might agree but will smith has a bit of a like a dickhead energy going on here i don't know if this is something that like remains on a constant i mean i i there's some other videos i feel like i would want to look at that i've seen floating around the internet that might help answer that question but i don't i don't need to get ready i stay ready like bruh and nobody asked you for that it was a courtesy to make sure they don't start shooting when you're not, you know, ready to be on camera, you know? That just seems like some dickhead energy. And I feel like he didn't need to bring that. But I mean, one thing that one thing that's like pretty typical in the world of fitness and, and transformation, and it's, it happens a lot in the bodybuilding community, where, you know, you go into carb depletion and when you're carb depleted, you can become an absolute raging dickhead. And it has a lot to do with the fact that like you're running on nothing and you just feel at the edge of your rope constantly. And like your brain has no energy to, to properly line up and complete thoughts. So you just, you're on permanent dickhead mode, just constantly just firing off at anybody who comes even kind of within your range. Uh, and yeah, I mean, until after the show and after you get off stage and you finally carved up some and you're back to normal, it's known just kind of stand up a bodybuilder's way during depletion because they're not a pleasant human being during that period um for obvious reasons not not that that's an excuse to be a dickhead or an asshole to people but it, it it's an explanation gives us an understanding as to what the what the hell's going on right um but yeah uh, i'm really interested to see where we go from here next week because he's like, he's essentially quit. So like, where, what do we even do from here? I think there's like one or two more episodes. So what do we even do from here? I, I, I got to know. I'm super interested. Uh, anyhow, um, I think we essentially tackled everything from this episode. Um, we get to see more of his sort of like, so, like what he looks like when he feels defeated. The sort of truth of his anger and his rage and his, his, his disappointment in himself. It looks like just like the mirror image of what I'm sure his father would have display to him if he had not completed a mission it's just like you know just he's just replicating his father's ideologies his, his patterns his energy and yeah it's crazy to see um but yeah um yeah what do you think what did you think of this episode what do you think of will smith in dickhead mode what do you think of him wanting to quit what do you think of him not hitting his target for that for the week what do you think of him weighing in every single day personally as a trainer uh-uh that's just a that's a path to a bad time 
but I, yeah, I digress. Um, whatever you think, comment below. Let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, stay shining because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace.